One thing that I found very interesting was the way the women talk in great detail about how they said goodbye to the men in Kilmainham. Um, and I wanted to approach this not from a sentimental or patriotic point of view, but just analytic, what's going on here. And what's clear, and there, there are lots, and well, there can't be more than 14, obviously, 14 men executed, but there are quite a number of very detailed accounts. And in all cases, the men did not want displays of emotion. Uh, the men didn't didn't want to go into the history books um, as someone, people who had cried when the guns were turned on them. Um, and so they, they, they were calm and they were uh, dignified and they, they made, they signaled to the women in various ways that they didn't want a lot of tears. Um, and the women registered that wish, and in most cases they they followed along with that. Um, but what that meant was that the women had to suppress their own feelings, and that was very difficult. For instance, Madge Daly, in in a memoir that very few people have read because it hasn't been published, it's in the collections of the University of Limerick. Uh, it's, Madge Daly says that. Her sis she and her sister Laura and her sister Kathleen Clark were all in the cell with Ned Daly. And she says that Laura was, that sister was Ned's special chum, I think is the word she uses. And she was very worried about how Laura would manage. And as they went, got, as they had been on their way to Kilmaine, Madge says, you know, we are the nieces of Fenians and so forth. And so they're talking themselves into great courage. But as they're going down those awful stairs at Kilmainham, they said goodbye to Ned, the door to the cell has closed. She says that she feels Laura's steps falter on the stairs, and she whispers to her, you know, you must bear up, and Laura says, never fear. But they're suppressing something, and you can tell. I mean, it's a lot of feeling there. And in fact, Kathleen Clark had a miscarriage a few weeks later in the summer. Um, the O'Hanrahan sisters, Eileen and Anna, two of the three sisters, go to say goodbye to Michal. And again, they suppress their feelings and they act dignified and he's worried about them. And she said, we all remember the women of 98, you know, they managed and we'll manage. She gets to the bottom of these awful stairs in Kilmainham and she faints. So clearly, you know, she faints, Laura falters, Kathleen Clark has a miscarriage. They, they behave just fine in the cells with the men, but it comes out in their bodies afterwards. And so another thing that interested me then was the whole idea of feelings, um, because lots of people talk about feelings, but nobody talks about it abstractly, the issue of feelings. But the rising clearly was a time of great emotion, sometimes great joy, and sometimes great misery, sometimes great sorrow. and. I found that in a lot of the witness statements or memoirs, the women say after the rising, I couldn't feel anything. Geraldine Plunkett Dillon says she was told after the rising that her parents were still alive. And she says that was good news, but I, I couldn't feel anything about it. Of course, her brother has just been executed. Kathleen Clark says she couldn't feel anything till after at the time of her miscarriage, she also had a near-death experience where she thought she was floating up to heaven and she could hear the voices of Tom and Sean McDermott and her brother Ned. And then she stopped being able to hear them and she came back to life. And to her regret, she would rather have been dead, and she cried. And that was the first time she cried since the rising. And even one man talks about this in a passage that I love, Robert Brennan has a wonderful and much neglected autobiography called Allegiance. And he was, he thought to be the next person killed after the 14 who were um, executed immediately after the rising. And he was in his cell, I think he was in Mountjoy actually, and a priest came to him and talked in great detail about how stupid the rising was, what a waste, it was violent, they didn't have enough men and so forth. And then the priest stopped and looked at Brennan's face and said, I hope I haven't hurt your feelings. And Brennan said, good Lord, no, I haven't got any. Uh, and so I thought that was interesting in that 
just the the inability to feel you know after the rifle